Carlos D, um, and I play bass in Interpol. I'm Paul, and I play guitar and sing. We've already had w weird enough experiences with fans um, um, to convey the idea that there's more in store for us. I had a bizarre person, I was going to say it was one of the weirdest things on the road, just this guy came into the bathroom before a gig, it was actually in England, and instead of just sort of like waiting for me to finish going to the bathroom or even like waiting for me to leave the bathroom, he just kind of came and stood on the ledge because it was a urinal just over my shoulder and starts talking to my ear over my shoulder while I'm urinating and it was just like, huh, you know, someone recommended I should have just kept, you know, turned to talk to him because I'm being addressed and, you know, but yeah, I don't know what he was thinking as far as like, you know, personal space, needs, you know, like, really wacky guy. The band got together in New York in 1998 in New York University. Um, Daniel, the other guitar player, actually sort of assembled the band. He really wanted to start a band and he didn't really have an idea about uh, what that band was supposed to sound like or anything like that. That wasn't really his concern. What he wanted, to, what he was interested in having like a real band where everybody had equal say and it was sort of like work in progress kind of style where everybody was just sort of feeding ideas into each other. He just kind of went out on a limb and started talking to Carlos. So he co kind of collected us in a way. Um, he approached me in class, um, and, uh, and uh, he had already known Paul from a study abroad program, bumped into him on the street, and remembered that he uh, sang and played guitar. We needed a singer. One day, on, out of the blue, he'd seen me with a guitar, and so he said, oh, do you play? Yes. You want to come listen to what we're doing? So I did. Uh, that was Carlos Daniel, the original drummer. Then. Uh, we parted ways with Greg and Daniel once again knew Sam from, he worked at a record store so he knew him from there and he knew that he played drums and yes. And that's kind of like where you see the identity that Interpol has, right now, has now was basically forged when Sam joined the band. We all, all come back, come from different musical backgrounds. I guess I am the member in the band that has the, the Joy Division influence and the Echo and the Bunnymen influence and all the other names that you often hear associated with us. When I started playing music, I was into, um, you know, Sugar, um, Jane's Addiction. I liked Nirvana when I was, you know, 14, a lot, a lot. I used to be really into, you know, sort of uh, dark symphonic gothic kind of neoclassical type stuff like dark ambient music and things like that. Um, a lot of stuff with rich harmonies and things, so I, I bring a lot of that to the table. As a band, we never said, oh, do you like this kind of music? Do you not like this kind of music? It was much more about, do we like what we're doing as individuals? I think like the act of making music is just sort of a need, um, but the things that when I do get inspiration, I think they probably come a lot from um, girls, film, um, crazy people, and books, I think would be the top ones. A bizarre tale from the road. In one case, a junkie broke into our dressing room and took both of our guitars about five minutes before stage time. Um, and I, we actually wound up miraculously tracking down one of them because um, he'd sold it for $60 to some kid on the street. I mean, a lot of people, you know, sort of paint this picture that Interpol is this kind of like gloom, rock, you know, mopey rock kind of band, which to a certain extent does have some application. But we also, you know, we, we also pretty rhythmically driving band and we, you know, um, like to convey that sort of energy. So, we, you know, there is a certain level of excitement that we do try to, to bring out. As a band, sonically, it's not like a band, we're not the kind of band that's all slop when they perform live. So I think it's it's a good representation of what is on the record and then there's, there's a good live energy that you know, maybe is not something that you get on the record, so in that sense it's well worth it. 
it, it's not, you know, like balls out rock because there is a lot of melody and stuff that we need to focus on, a lot of moods and atmosphere that we also want to convey. So it's like a little interplay, I would say, between, um, you know, kind of rocking out and also like, you know, letting, you know, letting, you know, meditating on what's going on so that other people can also like feed into the atmosphere. My personal ultimate ambition is, of course, for this band to continue on the road that it's, it's on now as to where it, it will actually end up. That's not really for me to, to say. The ultimate ambition for me is just to keep making music and to be in a position where I can make music full time. So uh, I just look forward to the next record and playing more shows. I would also like to do things like you know, maybe host a game show or something like that.